The following story has been brought to you by storiestoinspire.org. I heard from my father an unbelievable concept. I believe it's from the Benish Chai. There was a miser, a very wealthy, a very rich, but yet a very cheap man, who was the wealthiest man in town, but he was so cheap that he actually lived in the back of his store. Why go and pay rent in two places? So he had a storefront, which was doing extremely well. And then he had a cot with a bed in the back of the store. That's where he lived, and that's where he slept at night. Now this miser, he was very lonely. So one day he calls up the Shad Chanit, and she's, he says to her, Please, bring me a wife. I'll take good care of her. I'm wealthy. Well, the Shad Chanit looks at the miser, and he says, I, I understand that. But with all your money, Nobody is going to marry you, because what woman would live in the back of a store? This is what I'll do for you. I want you to go out and buy a beautiful house somewhere in the city. You go out and buy a home, a place that a woman would be willing to live in, then I'll do my part. I'll have a whole line of wonderful young ladies lined up to go out with you. The miser said, that's all it takes? All I need to do is go out and buy a beautiful house? You got it. I'm going to go out. I'm going to buy the nicest house in this town. And the miser closes his store early that day. And he goes out into the city and he's looking for the nicest home. And sure enough, he comes down one block and he sees a beautiful house. And he goes and knocks on the door of the house. And the owner comes to the door. Hello, can I help you? And the miser says, yes. Actually... I'd like to buy your house. I'll offer you $50,000. The homeowner turns back to the miser and says, "Uh, Excuse me, sir. Did you see a for sale sign in front of my house? My house isn't for sale. I mean, thank you for the offer, but the house is not for sale. Well, the miser, a man who doesn't take no for an answer, he says, Oh, I see, I see, I get it. This is a negotiation ploy. Okay. You know what? I'll up my price. Not fifty thousand dollars. I'll offer you a hundred thousand dollars. But listen, I'm not going to go that much further. Take my offer. The store, the homeowner is laughing. Sir, the house is not for sale. And with that, he slams the door. Oh, ho, 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 the miser is upset. Nobody says no to him, and he's not used to losing a negotiation. So the miser goes back to his store. Next day, the miser shows up again by the house. This time, he knocks on the door with a big smile. The homeowner comes to the door. Oh, boy, you again. The miser says, okay, listen, listen, listen. I'm going to offer you a quarter of a million dollars. Believe me, you're getting a good price. Sell me your home. The guy gets upset. The homeowner gets angry. Sir, the house is not for sale. Don't you get it? No matter what you offer me, it's not for sale. The miser says, everything is for sale. Okay, listen to me. Let's get this done. I understand where you're going with this. I'll offer you a half a million dollars, but that's my final offer. you got to be crazy not to take the money. The homeowner gets so upset. He says, no matter what you offer me, the house is not for sale. And he slams the door. Oh, now the miser is steaming. He goes back to his store. The next day, the miser comes back to the house, but this time with a beautiful smile. He knocks on the door. The homeowner comes to the door, and he says, Oh, no, I'm not going to go through this again. The miser says, No, 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 it's okay. I'm not offering to buy your house. I understand. I respect you. Your house is not for sale. I get it. But I have another proposition One that I feel you won't turn away. Listen, the miser turns to the store, the homeowner. I don't want to buy your house. I just want to rent an inch on the back door, on the back wall of your home. Just an inch. And I'll pay you a $1,000 a month rent to rent me an inch on the back wall of your home. Are you willing to do that? 
the homeowner's thinking, oh, there has to be a catch to this. He wants to pay me a thousand dollars for an inch on the back wall of my home. Then there has to be something to this. The homeowner says, okay, come on, really. What is it that you're up? He says, no, 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 I'm not up to anything. Take a look. He opens up a contract and he says, take a look, read the contract. It says what it means and it means what it says. I'm all I want is to rent an inch on the back wall of your house and I'll pay you a thousand dollars a month. And here's the first payment for the first month. The homeowner reads the contract and it actually says exactly that. And he's looking for the fine print. He's looking for the catch. There's no catch. Okay. <laughs> You want to throw out a thousand dollars of your hard earned money? That's fine with me. The homeowner pulls out a pen. He signs the contract. The miser with a smile signs the contract. The miser hands the homeowner the thousand dollars for the first rental month payment. And the miser goes home, smiling with the contract under his arm. The next morning, at five o'clock in the morning, by the break of dawn, suddenly, the homeowner sleeping on the inside in his bedroom. Suddenly he hears banging on the back of the wall of his home. Five o'clock in the morning. Who in the world is crazy enough to be banging? And hey, that's coming from my backyard. The homeowner jumps out of bed. He looks out of his back window. And he can't believe his eyes. He sees there's the miser standing with a hammer and a nail, driving a nail into the back wall of his house. Homeowner opens the window. Hey, you! What are you, crazy? It's 5 o'clock in the morning. What are you doing? The miser looks up and smiles. Good morning! Sorry if it's a little bit early. Um, I was just coming to use the inch that you rented me. Remember? Here's my contract. That's my inch now on your wall. And I'd like to use it. There was nothing the homeowner could say. He did rent in the inch, and he watched as the miser banged away a nail into the inch on the back wall of his home. Well, the homeowner said to himself, all right, big deal. I still got a thousand dollars. So he drove a nail into the back of my wall. Well, the next day, the homeowner wakes up early that morning, and his wife turns to him and says, do you smell something? I smell something terrible. The homeowner turns to his wife and says, Yeah, I smell that terrible smell. It's horrible. Where's it coming from? They jump out of bed. They start going through every room in the house. But this was such a reeking, terrible smell that you couldn't live with the smell. They go upstairs. They go downstairs. They go to the basement. Where's the smell coming from? Till finally, husband and wife, they run outside and they see that the smell is coming from the back of the house. They run to their backyard, and there, lo and behold, on the nail that the miser drilled, knocked into the inch in the back of the wall of their home yesterday, now on that nail is hanging a sack, and there's something inside that sack. The homeowner sees that the smell is coming from that sack. So the homeowner runs up to the sack, and he opens, and he peeks inside the sack, and he sees... There's a dead animal inside this, and the smell is terrible. And his wife says, what's going on? Which nut would put a dead animal in a sack off of a nail hanging on the back of our wall? And the homeowner says, uh, how do I explain this to you? I rented him the inch, and now he's using it. She says, listen to me, my husband. Either you get rid of that sack, or... I'm moving out. I can't live in a house that smells so terrible. I'm leaving. The homeowner says, oh, okay, I'll take care of it. The homeowner runs downtown to the store where the miser works, where he lives. He comes into the store and he says to him, hey, you hung a sack on the back wall with a dead animal and it smells so bad that I can't live in my house. The miser smiles and says, yeah, I know. Now, tell me. No, 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 but you don't understand. you got to get rid of the sack. you got to get rid of that dead animal. I can't live in my home. My wife wants to leave me. I can't live in the house anymore. 
And the miser says, yeah, I know. So tell me, now that you can't live in your home anymore, do you want to sell me the house? Oh, but this time, I'm not offering you a half a million dollars. I'm not offering you a quarter of a million dollars. I'm not even offering you my original offer of $8,000. I'll give you $10,000 for the home, and you better take it. My friends, that is the ways of the Yetzer Hara, the miser. First he comes to us and he tells us to do major averot, and we tell him, get out of here. The house is not for sale. I'm not for sale. I would never be Mahalil Shabbat. I would never do that avera or this avera or eating ta Those are terrible, big, I'm not for sale. Get out of here. But then Yetzir Hara comes back very cunningly. And he says, oh, I see you're not for sale. I see that your neshama is not for sale. Okay, you know what? How about this? Just give me an inch. Just an inch. And then we give him an inch. And then from that little bit, he takes a little more. And from that little bit, he takes a little more. Till little by little, before you know it, he takes us over completely. And we lose control. And then Yitzhara comes back with a smile and says, Now I got you. Now you belong to me. Now you're going to sell me the house, and you're going to sell it bizol. Now I'm going to take you for pennies. This is the way Yitzhara works in almost all situations in life. At first, he just asks for an inch. And at the end, he walks away with the entire house for pennies. How do you fight the Yitzhara? You don't give him an inch. That's the way we fight him. Yeah, yeah. How many times we hear people say, I'm just going to go... But I'm not going to do anything. Oh, that, you just gave him the inch and wait. Once you're there, one thing leads to another. And before you know it, we lost control. I'm just going to look. I'm only going to do this. I'm only going to do that. And all that is giving Yitzhak Hara that inch. And from there, he takes a little more and a little more and then a little more. And then we turn around and before we know it, we're totally out of control. Before we know it, he bought us bizol for pennies. And then, and then we're at his mercy. How does a person start to do teshuva? The first step is to know yourself, to identify your strength. And most of all, like Kasparov taught us, identify your weaknesses Know yourself. And when you figure out your weaknesses, it's those areas that you know that you can't give the miser an inch. Not even an inch. Don't give that Yetzir Hara an inch in the areas of your weakness. Because he's going to take that inch and a little more and a little more and a little more and he's going to take the house. He's going to take you. And then we're out of control and we're lost. This is the message of Teshuvah. This is a strategy. This is a war against Yetzir Hara. How do you deal with an opponent that knows everything about you? That knows how strong you are, your weaknesses, your strengths. How do you deal with him? Here's the answer. you got to know yourself. And especially in the areas that you're weak, you cannot give an inch. You have to make a get there. You have to put fences around those areas where you don't even go near it. An example. And a person who has a terrible alcoholic addiction. Do you know that the ways that they help people who fell to alcoholism, an alcoholic, do you know that an alcoholic is not even allowed to walk into a liquor store, even to make a phone call, to use an ATM? But what do you mean? I'm not buying anything. Do you know that an alcoholic is not allowed to meet friends in a bar? even if he's going to drink a cup of water. But why? Why? 
Because if you know that's your weakness, even to walk into such a place is giving your weakness the inch it needs to draw you a little more, and then a little more, and then a little more. An alcoholic. Each and every one of us, we have our weaknesses in life. We have our alcohol of life. Don't be foolish to say, ah, I'm just going to take a little sip. It's not that bad. What is it going to do to me? Don't give Yetzer Hara an inch. And with that, he'll never be able to propel us. And we'll continue to show him our neshama is not for sale. Enjoyed this story? Come again. Bring a friend. Stories to inspire.org.